Most Americans don't really know what the field of intelligence entails. Most Americans don't really understand the craft of intelligence. It's history, it's background, the principles of intelligence, the cycle of intelligence. They go to open source information, which we refer to as OSINT, on the internet, and in books, in movies, and so forth, and they think that they have this picture of the world of intelligence. They really don't. They know a little bit, and they know what they've read on the internet. The problem is there is a lot more to it. They've only seen a mere fraction of what they think the world of intelligence is all about. There are a lot of myths, rumors, and misconceptions with regard to the field and craft of intelligence. The professional field of intelligence is almost nothing like the spy movies that you see. A lot of the tasks of intelligence are mundane tasks, menial tasks, things such as research of information. Oftentimes, it's open source intelligence information, information in books, esoteric textbooks, books that are no longer in print, information that's hidden in archives in library systems that are almost non-existent. Sometimes we're referring to private libraries, individuals who have worked in certain areas of government, defense, security, and they maintain professional books in different fields in their own personal private libraries at home. So a lot of intelligence is derived from open sources, newspapers, magazines, television. Whereas you hear from people in public who think that they know about intelligence, they think that a lot of it comes from satellite and electronic intercept, telephone, fax, telex, all these different sources. And that is true. However, a lot more of it, I would say, comes from open source intelligence. They don't understand that the information that the largest spy agencies gather comes from word of mouth. Information that is disseminated from human to human. Human intelligence information comes from information in the field. It comes from intelligence analysts researching information that you can find in print, in media, on radio, through open channels of communication in public society. And then what those intelligence analysts do is they take the information information that most human beings are not aware of, that most human beings are not cognizant of, that most human beings are not even paying attention to, they take segments of that information, they take certain blocks of that information, certain chunks of that information, certain little pieces of that information, again, information that most human beings are not even paying attention to, they take those different sets of data and then they link them together and they try to find patterns and they try to determine trends. So so again, the people in the general public who think that they understand the craft of intelligence, they only in their minds have a movie version of what they think the world of intelligence is all about. James Bond and all these different fantasy roles that they have come to be subjected to for all these different generations. The American hero, British secret intelligence service, uh, CIA, FBI, cloak and dagger, Cold War. That's their notion of the, the world of intelligence. Intelligence. And then the other thing is, in modern times, you have in the world of intelligence, within the intelligence community, you have people from many different ethnic populations, communities. The racial makeup of the intelligence communities worldwide is very much different from that of 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30, 40, 50 years ago. You see in the movies the Caucasian, white Anglo Saxon Protestant, the white guy with the cigar and the trench coat. And so you think, oh, okay, well, Everyone in uh, intelligence is uh, some kind of white guy in a trench coat with a cigar. No, that's if that's what you think the world of intelligence is, then you don't know intelligence. You you have no clue. Not only are there African Americans and Hispanic Americans and Asian Americans in the world of intelligence, the intelligence community is made up of individuals from every conceivable ethnic population, from every conceivable ethnic group. You have to have people from every ethnic group who have understanding of the world's culture cultures in order to have a functional intelligence community network. You have to know everything about every culture. Therefore, you need native individuals
individuals from every respective culture on the planet in order to best understand those particular cultures, every particular culture. So the worldwide nexus of intelligence communities and intelligence networks consists of individuals from every ethnic group. So it's not just the white guy with the cigar in the trench coat. Because if you're on the lookout for that guy, then you're not seeing so many trillions of other bits of data around you. You don't know that it could be anybody. The intelligence community historically has used in operations infants, believe it or not. Infants in intelligence operations. If you went into the archives of intelligence and you studied the textbook knowledge of intelligence, you would know that in order to protect America, America has gone to such an extent that in some instances there have been children, newborns, in, you know, carrying bassinets in, you know, arm of man, woman, and that child was raised in the intelligence community for that very purpose. So that you see that man and that woman and he, she has child in hand, newborn, you think, oh, it's a family, it's a man and a woman who have a newborn. They couldn't possibly be intelligence operatives. Well, you got got. They got you because the whole thing is an operation. Senior citizens have been used as well. There are a lot of people who have above top secret security clearances and they're senior citizens because you're not expecting the old man or the old woman with the cane or the, you know, the rocker. You you don't see that, you know, with the walker. You think, oh, it's an old woman. She can't possibly be a threat. She's not part of the matrix of this intelligence theater. No, she is. She is. And you got got. They got you. That's one of the facets of intelligence operations. And if you've been a student of intelligence, as have I, for the past decade, then you would know these things. A lot of Americans who think that they understand intelligence, they don't. There's also this notion that the intelligence community doesn't hire people who have not so impeccable, not so stellar, not so pristine criminal backgrounds. It's not true. It's not true at all. That's what the CIA tells you on their website, and the CIA generally doesn't hire anyone who has a criminal background. However, it depends on the position, and it depends on the operation. How can the CIA, for example, operate without hiring dangerous terrorists to turn those dangerous terrorists against other terrorists? The CIA naturally has to hire people with not-so-perfect backgrounds. They have to. Of course, they don't want people with felonies who have set little old ladies on fire with gasoline, who have raped and molested people. They don't want people like that for their operations. They're going to use dangerous terrorists to work against other terrorists. If they can be manipulated in such a way, if they can be coerced in such a way, if they can be made to think in a certain way. But the CIA is not going to tell you that on their website, but you should know that. If you think you understand intelligence, you ought to know that that is the very nature of mathematical game theory in the intelligence community. Things are not always what they seem. The FBI hired the man whose character is played by Leonardo DiCaprio in the movie Catch Me If You Can. He was a criminal. He was a felon. He was wanted in many different parts of the world, in many different countries. And the FBI hired him. He was a felon. He went to prison. So your notions aren't always correct. It's like Mythbusters, the show. You need to get your facts straight.